Chen. Um, I work at Frog Design. I help uh, lead our early stage design and uh, investing practice. I have a secret. I'm not a designer. Um, this is, uh, I know this is Designer and Geeks, um, but this is, uh, I wanted to provide a little bit of context around uh, the perspective that I want to bring um, to this, this talk today. I have an immense amount of respect for design, um, for what it can do for people and what it can do for companies. I've spent really my entire career um, working actually a lot of design companies. I spent some time at Bjarke Ingels Group, which is an architecture firm in Copenhagen. I spent some time at Herman Miller, um, which really is probably one of the earliest um, design-driven companies. And then now I'm at Frog. But really, I'm, I'm a business guy, econ economics, econometrics guy at heart. But really, this is um, the lens through which I look at design and see how it provides value to people and companies. So um, for those of you who haven't heard of Frog, um, we are a global and design um, strategy firm. Around 500 people around the world, designers, technologists, engineers, blah, 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 blah across 12 global studios. Um, it's really hard to describe what Frog does. Um, we helped GE transform their entire business into um, digital um, in their software business. And then most recently, we also helped design SF MoMA's um, interaction augmented reality exhibit um, inspired by Magritte. And then um, also with IKEA, we helped them design uh, their products um, and their entree into smart home and defining the feature set essentially that goes into uh, the new products of, of their smart lighting system. And a project that I worked on um, personally a couple of years ago um, was Toyota Yui, which is when we designed a, um, an AI personality for a concept car. So Frog is, it does a little bit of service design, digital design, industrial design, product strategy. It's kind of a little bit of everything, and it's really kind of hard to describe what we do, but um, you kind of know it when you see it. Um, the brief of this talk was thinking about the evolution of creative services. Um, and I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide one hypothesis around, um, based on our own experience at Frog and what that, has, that experience has been. Frog's been around for almost 50 years now, so we've seen all the waves of design and it's experienced all the different parts of the um, eras of design. And it really started with the hero, um, our founder, Hartmut. Uh, he's from Germany, he was like one guy who worked with Steve Jobs, he designed all of Apple's additional um, product design language system in the 80s. He grew the company. He started solving more complicated problems, went into software, started offering more and more services, and started hiring more people. And then there's today, Frog, the kind of big corporate consultancy um, that's kind of semi-faceless <laughs> in, this, in this photo. <laughs> um, but today, if you really think about like, what each of these phases were selling in Frog's own history, um, you see the hero. At that point, you're, you're kind of, he was selling essentially the taste, the spark of genius in one human being and the point of view of that one person. Then he moved into the agency world when he was providing skills, skills and capabilities to deliver on um, software. And then today, when we think about Frog's business, we are thinking about business outcomes and growth. How do we help large companies grow and how do we help them innovate? So when I think about um, Frog's next evolution, um, I lead a practice that's specifically devoted to one hypothesis and one path forward for the next evolution of Frog. And that is, what does it mean um, when we become a builder, a builder of companies and a builder of startups? And this is a, a company that we just launched today. Um, you might have heard of it in the press. It's called Momentum Machines. We invested in their, uh, in their company. And we, uh, they just came out of stealth, and they're creating like, these amazing robotic hamburgers. <laughs> and it's actually really cool. You should check it out. There's a lot of press about it. Um, but when we think about what it means to be a builder, what are, the, what are you really buying from Frog? You're buying taste, skills, growth, but you're also buying capital. You're buying a network of relationships. And you're also buying an experience specifically catered and tailored to building new businesses from scratch. So. Um, this is kind of what I want to talk about today, what that has felt like for Frog and what we've learned from working with startups. Because we really believe that design can build stronger startups. And we've worked with a ton of startups. And we've also invested our services in many, many startups. And that perspective of us being an investor in startups has really changed our perspective around what design can do. So I'll start with this quote. Um, this is a common quote for among many VCs. 
too much money can kill startups. So that means when you raise too much money, you start deprioritizing, focusing on the wrong things, you make bad decisions. It's really just what happens when you raise too much money is that you just focus in the wrong places and all of a sudden you're just not doing the right thing for your company. What I like to um, propose, and that's something that I think about, and we, the entire team at Frog thinks about every day, is that too much design can also kill startups. And this is essentially um, the crux of what I'd like to talk about related to how we think about start, uh, working with startups. So I'll talk about five things that we think about um, when we are working with startups and um, what we've learned about it. The first is um, what we call Goldilocks design. It's directly related to too much design can kill a startup. Um, when you think about a startup, it's constantly changing. Um, the customers are changing, the products are changing, the financing situation is changing, the technology is changing. Everything is in constant change. So when we are working with a startup, we really need to think about what is Goldilocks for them. And at a high level, um, we were, were thinking about it like design for belief, design for launching, and design for scaling. And we're trying to think about where can we fit in and where the startup is in its trajectory, and how do we fit into this rocket ship that's constantly changing. So as, as an example, um, this is a company that we worked with called Bellwether Coffee. Um, that's actually one of my first projects at Frog. They came to us um, really like three years ago. It was just one guy, um, Ricardo. He had a, an idea on a napkin. It was like something around like a roaster that was like electric and ventless, and like he didn't really have a, a, a great story. It was a very abstract idea, and it was very difficult to tell and raise money for. So what we did at that time was something we call a design for belief program, which is how we tell the story and the potential and the value of this idea. Um, and, uh, and that was around, uh, at the time, um, they came up with the, this idea of this roaster. But really what, the, what they were trying to do was disintermediate and change the value chain of coffee. Because roasting has the highest margin and it's the most expensive and most capital intensive of, of the entire supply chain. And we helped them tell that story through a pitch deck, through amazing visuals, and, through, and it really helped bring home the idea of the potential value of this company. They went and raised $6 million of a series seed. They hired a world-class team. Um, and then they shipped their first product um, a couple of months ago. And then we did a design for launch program with a whole brand um, and a brand and marketing program around that. So, we hope that they will hire us again when um, they're scaling, but it's really thinking about what is Goldilocks for a startup at their particular moment in time and what is, has the most impact for them at that time. The second um, thing that we really, really, really think about is design for ROI. Um, every cent matters, of course, like business and design. We talk about that all the time at Frog. Um, for enterprise, it matters as well. But when you're thinking about a startup that has extremely constrained resources, every single cent matters. So design needs and business needs really have to be exactly aligned. So when we talk, I mean, often companies come to us and they're like, oh, we need a new brand identity, we need a new product, uh, we need to look cool, we need to seem slicker. But then at the end of the day, what is the job to be done of the design? What are they actually trying to achieve as a company? And that means they need to raise more money, they need to find product market fit, they need to find our first customers. They need to grow faster. And that is really what we're solving for when we work with companies. So this is an example when we worked with um, Charlie, um, who's a personal finance chatbot. The overlap for them was they came to us for brand identity. But what, what they really needed to do was they needed, to, um, they needed faster user growth and a lower customer, cost of customer, a lo lower customer acquisition cost. So we gave them a brand and a new character named Charlie. He's a cute little penguin. Like, it was like, really pretty different in the financial services space, meant to be approachable, friendly. He's a chatbot. He's kind of quirky as a personality. But when we thought about thinking about their business problem around driving down customer acquisition costs, we had to think about the entire customer journey from awareness all the way to conversion. So we designed them, really, every single design asset and touch point from that entire journey including like, the conversation that you have with Charlie to connect your bank account, because that is essentially the business goal that they had. And as a result, they were able to have a 50% reduction in their CAC. Um, their design investment paid back in six months, and they have 10x user growth, 100,000 users. So we're really, really focused on how do we make sure that our design is not only great and beautiful and 
distinctive and relevant, but it's also really achieving the job to be done for the company. Um, the second piece is this notion of progress over process. Um, a lot of our um, larger companies really, uh, it's this delicate balance when we think about progress and process. How do we balance um, progress and process together? When we work with startups, um, we tried to like uh, program, it's all developed in agile sprints so that, so that we are trying to um, work as fast as possible and to align and mirror the way that the startup works. So um, we, 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 the, a metaphor that we often talk about is this, it's kind of like um, changing a tire. So when we're helping a company around product or brand or marketing or storytelling, we think about those all as knobs or bolts on a tire, and we're constantly changing each one of them and testing the limits of each one of them at the same time. So this is a company that we worked with. Um, it was eight parallel tracks of work in eight weeks. Um, it's a company called Tempo. Uh, they are a, a Series B, a future of manufacturing. They make printed circuit boards. Uh, a really, really, really cool company um, that just uh, is about to launch their new factory. And we were doing their brand strategy, we were doing their content strategy, we were helping articulate their positioning statements, we were helping them think through their actual future factory experience, which they're launching in a couple of months. We are designing their mobile web experience, their marketing experience, and their packaging, and their signage system. And all of these things are happening at the same time, and it's extremely stressful for our designers. But <laughs> um, what, what this does um, is that our designers are, we want them to be thinking about how all of what their design has, how it, what, their, what are their implications on all the other touch points that might happen for, for the system. And from this perspective, we're able to make a lot more progress. So here's kind of the work that we did with Tempo. So you, they're about to launch soon. That's packaging, the website, the brand, the factory, sort of interior, um, the billboard. Uh, the renderings of the factory, and also some visual design language. And uh, the founder, and this is the, the team here, and one of the co-founders co is actually here, Shashank. He's actively looking for design <laughs> talent right now, so I encourage you to go talk to him. He's over there. Um, this is a really, really cool company. Um, they're trying to like, disrupt uh, the future of manufacturing, and it's, it's really, really cool. So I would suggest you reach out to them. Uh, the fourth is this idea of shared risk and shared reward. Um, of course, startups also want uh, our incentives to be aligned with the startup. So this is a traditional um, issue with consultants and clients, is that we might not have totally aligned interests. So what we've done at Frog is we've now invested in 18 startups um, from pre-seed all the way to Series B. We've um, had some successes, we've had some failures, um, we've had an exit um, to Verizon, and we've had one startup that's actually shut down. But it's been a really, really great ride, and we've learned a lot from it. And now we really see ourselves as investors. So in this case, um, we are co-investing alongside um, a lot of uh, Kostla for Momentum, for example, and we co-invested along Lux for, um, for, for Tempo. And that's the kind of the way we think about ourselves, is that we're not only designers and service providers, but we're also investors in their own company, and that aligns our interest in the long run, which makes us better partners to them. And then most recently, we've, we've formalized that partnership and systematized it much further by partnering with Tuesday Capital, which is um, Crunch, it's formerly known as Crunch Fund, that came out of TechCrunch, the founder of, Michael Arring, uh, founder of TechCrunch, Michael Arrington, They've invested in a bunch of really cool companies like Uber and Cruise. And now we essentially have this partnership where we've systematized how we can co-invest in their portfolio companies. And the last um, piece here that we really think about at Frog is how do we help our companies beyond design, beyond the thing that we're designing? Um, and that means helping them with awareness and tapping into sort of our global network of partners and media partners. It means helping them and connecting them with our business development opportunities with our Fortune 500 clients. And it also means helping them with tools and helping them with HR and hiring people. So there's the thing that we want to make sure that we deliver on, but we want to sort of deliver on everything outside of that thing and so that we can really help them propagate design into their company. Uh, this is a, a great example of a, how we did that. Um, Heatworks came to us. Um, they've developed this amazing technology that instantaneously heats water um, in a much smaller form factor. 
So we did the product design, the industrial design, um, you know, like the digital product, the positioning, the strategy, the messaging, and that was all very effective. But when we thought about what they were coming to us for, they came to us with this amazing technology that could totally revolutionize how people heat water. And we turned it into a concept for them as well, which was, what if we use their technology in a countertop dishwasher for New York and really small apartments? And we released this concept, and it got insane press um, from CNET, Business Insider, and Verge, and then one best of CES. And now HeatWorks is now in conversation. We connected to them to a lot of our Fortune 500 clients around how to use their technology in their, in, in their potential other partners and other use cases. So we're always trying to think about how do we help a company beyond just the design itself? And how can we add value to a company? So um, why do we do this? Because at the end of the day, um, the majority of revenue from Frog actually does not come from startups, not surprisingly. Most of it comes from large Fortune 500 companies. And we do it for um, two reasons. The first is when we think my group is really, um, our, our charter is to invest in the future of design. What design can be, uh, what, are the, what are the future of interfaces? What are the future of different user behaviors that we want to be instigating in people? And this is an example of something that we did. Um, it was liquid Wi-Fi, which, which is connected cities, which is something that we find really uh, a design frontier that we really want to invest in. And we created this concept and it was acquired by Verizon. So that's number one. So any kind of project um, or any startup that we invest in, um, we are always thinking about how are we pushing forward what design can be. But the second is, how are we investing in the future of designers? Um, and that's um, something around how do we train designers and um, expand the def definition of what design, or design can be? And that means uh, we want our designers to think about Goldilocks design. We want them to think about ROI. We want them to think about what can they add, how can they add value to a company beyond just the design itself. And this is kind of the, the sort of whole thesis of why we do Frog Ventures in the first place, which is that we really want our, our, our designers to cycle in between large enterprise clients where they learn different tools and small clients where they have very, very they work under different circumstances. And at the end of the day, we want them to be able to bring the best tools and the best perspective from both worlds to the challenge at hand. So thank you for listening to me. Um, this is my email address if you ever want to talk to a non-designer. And um, LinkedIn, Instagram, it's me. I don't, I don't, I'm not on Twitter. <laughs>